He then moved to Toronto to begin his career as a rigging artist. He's worked with award-winning studios, including Scanline VFX, Image Engine, and Frame Store on films including Black Panther, Ant-Man and the Wasp, and Justice League. Harris is currently a rigging technical director at Frame Store in Montreal. And finally, Sean Martinbro is the author of How to Draw Noir Comics, The Art and Technique of Visual Storytelling, published by Random House and reprinted in several languages. He is also the artist of acclaimed graphic novel crime series Thief of Thieves, published by Skybound, Image Comics, and written by Walking Dead creator Robert Kirkman and Eisner Award nominee Brett Lewis. Sean is a critically acclaimed creator artist whose DC, Marvel, and Dark Horse Comics projects include Batman Detective Comics, Luke Cage Noir, Captain America, Hellboy, and The Black Panther. He has co-created characters in the films Deadpool and Justice League, as well as in the TV series Batman, Gotham Knights, Gotham, and The Gifted. Please welcome Sean Martinbro, and here's our, our illustrious student moderator, Meyer Vendaka. Welcome back to the stage. Thanks, Adam. All right, welcome back, guys. I just want to congratulate you on all of your hard work and success. This is an amazing movie. I'm still stunned, and I've seen it like eight times already, mm -hmm. but it's all good. Um, so yeah, welcome back. Do you guys like remember what it was like being a student at SVA? Like, how's that been? <laughs> you going to me because I'm the oldest still on this age? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I graduated in, in 1993, I know, all the way back then, and um, that was back before this was the SBA Theater, um, and back before, I guess, SBA owned everything down below 42nd Street. Um, no, it was a great time, it was a fun place to, to work as a student and to be in that creative space where you had your, your fellow um, classmates, you know, all sort of striving to to um, you know, find themselves creatively, and it's a, a really cool school. And I, I always tell people that college is a place where it's kind of like what you get out of it, what you put into it, and it's really up to you to really, you know, uh, just absorb as much as you can, you know, to prepare yourself to go out into the, you know, the, the whatever industry you want to tackle. Um, hi, how's everybody doing? Thanks for coming out. Um, I guess I kind of like to start a little bit. It's great to see, this is my eighth, ninth time seeing the film. It's the third or fourth time after it was released, so like a bunch of progressions, and to me this is the best screening of it. Um, a movie this impactful, it's kind of great to see it outside of Hollywood and just see how it connects with people, so that's awesome. Um, I graduated 2004, um, so 2000 to 2004 were my years here. I went to high school in East Orange, a lot of my East Orange folks. Anybody here? There we go. Um, and I mean, I loved SVA. I mean, I 17 years ago this week, I woke up my sophomore um, year in the dorm rooms to 9-11. And so that kind of changed. And I bonded with New York City since then. And SVA, you know, being in art school, that one of the great things about it is it's one of the top art schools in the country. So at the end of the day, no matter how technical it gets, you're still an artist. And it was a very welcoming four years um, at SVA and to be able to create great art and experiences with, with a bunch of other amazing artists. Well, you really Hello, guys. So, I graduated in 2014 from the MFA computer art program, like uh, four years ago. So then I moved to Canada. So today, I, like the uh, first time when I come back after I graduated, like, uh, wow, everything is still the same. And, uh, yeah, I can still find the restaurant like around the F uh, the the S S V building, like uh, the same like a uh, sushi restaurant. And, uh, that's my favorite. And, uh, all those lovely faces, and uh, I visited my department yesterday. Like, uh, yeah, it's really nice. It's definitely a memorable moment for me for this screening. Nice to see you guys. That's awesome. So like since like graduating and stuff, like you guys are all are in like something that you guys specialize in. Like when did you know like this is what I want to be doing like as a career for like the rest of my life? Like when did you know what was that like moment like when you realized like hey this is what I want to do for the rest of my life and like work on this film, work on like the comic book series, like when did you know? Um I I, um, for me, I always wanted to be an animator. The day I saw Lion King, I said, I want to do that for a living. And I was fortunate to go to a, a performing and fine arts high school in East Orange called Cicely Tyson um, Performing and Fine Arts High School. And um, 
There you go. Um, and then I had an amazing teacher, rest, you know, rest in peace, Mr. Vincent Petuto, who taught animation there. And that, you know, got me a chance to um, get accepted to the School of Visual Arts. And just from there, it, it picked up, um, you know, loving Toy Story. Um, yeah, loving Toy Story, Pixar films, and carrying on from there. Um, so yeah, I've always, I would say since the age of 13, um, I've always wanted to be an animator. Yeah, I'd probably say um, elementary school. I, I, I first, when I first started reading comics, I just really just loved reading comics and telling stories. And then I went to uh, performing arts high school, uh, Fiorello Guardia, um, yeah. Guardia in the house, boom, music and art. Uh, I was an art major there, and um, that was interesting because that was a great. I mean, I'm a native New Yorker, and I grew up in the Bronx. And um, when I was in like junior high. My mom, actually no, probably when I was in elementary school, I had one of those Star Wars lunch boxes, those old metal lunch boxes that kids probably can't bring to college, bring to school anymore. Um, and it was a Star Wars lunch box, and I remember drawing that lunch box, and I brought the, the drawing home, and my mom and my dad saw it, and they said, oh, this kid might have some talent. So they enrolled me in a local community center uh, painting class, and that's really where I learned how to paint. And then I got it, and that, I created a, a, a portfolio of work that I showed to get myself into LaGuardia. And I, I got into LaGuardia as an art school, as an art major. And then I had a buddy of mine who was also a comic fan. And he was like, hey man, I take a really cool uh, cartooning class on the weekends, and it's up in Harlem, and it's at this nonprofit organization called the Children's Art Carnival. And they would have black professionals come in and teach classes for free uh, in cartooning, drawing, photography, and video. And that's really where I met my two mentors that really kind of just prepared me to sort of become a comic book artist. And one of them was all about the drawing. He was like, you have to learn how to draw, 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 you know, perspective, anatomy. The other one was like, this is a business. This is a hustle. And art schools really don't teach you about the hustle of actually becoming a professional artist. And so he introduced me. He would take his class to, uh, to, to uh, tour. We would get tours of DC Comics, Marvel, and I really started meeting artists that were you know, working in the business, people whose work I was a fan of, and that really showed me that I could do this. And they also, you know, I, I also saw people of color that were doing it as well. And so from there, I just really started just developing my craft. I went to the School of Visual Arts, I got a scholarship, and I went here for four years. And I was really determined not to wait until I graduated college before I went to look for a job, because that's when everyone's looking for a job. So in my junior year, I went to the New York Comic Con, and back then, that was like the only Comic Con in the country, for the most part. And you would you know, bring your portfolio to get work at, you know, from Marvel and DC, and I waited online with my portfolio. The editor would kind of go through your stuff, and if they liked it, they'd give you a card and say, give me a call. And that's how I got my first professional work from Marvel Comics. And so, so since then, I just, you know, so the thing about Marvel and DC is that they're competitive, so they steal everything from each other. Like they steal, you know, artists, writers, paper clips, whatever. And so if you work for Marvel, then all of a sudden DC will say, hey, we want you to work for us. And if you work for DC, Marvel will say, hey, we want to work for you. And so over the years, I just bounced back and forth, you know, working on different titles for Marvel and DC. And uh, it was really cool to sort of, in a very small part, just draw, you know, the Black Panther uh, way back in like 2010 for Marvel. And so it was really cool to sort of see, it's, it's just been a, a real treat to see all of these films that are based on the work of so many artists, you know, who have drawn the comic books and to see other artists, you know, like, like, like you guys just sort of build on that and sort of take it to the next level. And that's, that's pretty much, you know, it's, it's really cool. So. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it's like uh, when I was still in China, like uh, in college, uh, my major is more about filmmaking. And I saw my neighborhood like a uh, department, their animation, and their oh, their three D software is so cool, and they don't need to pay for like expensive camera or stuff. And I got to learn that stuff. Then I learned three D like uh, after a while, and then I figure out like uh, well, I'm probably not like a uh, artist that artistic. Then I said myself like uh, okay, I'm a nerd, so I want to go to like a uh, technical artist. I'll be a rigger. So well, I mean like uh, if you want to do like a 3D animation normally like uh, I want to work for Disney or for Blue Sky or something. I'm like, yeah, I want to work for big film, right? So when I moved to Canada, I started my career as a, like a TV animation studio. But I always have a dream to work on like a big film. Then after a while, I got a chance to 